Welcome to MyOtherProfessor.com. I'm Zaina, and today we are going to discuss biological membranes. So let's take a look at the outline of topics we'll be discussing. First, we'll go over the membrane structure. That includes the phospholipid bilayer and the fluid mosaic model. Next, we'll take a look at the membrane permeability and the different proteins involved in this. And next, we'll look at movement of substances. Uh, there are two main types of movement. There's passive and active. So the membrane structure, it's composed of a phospholipid bilayer. So a phospholipid is a glycerol backbone attached to two fatty acids and a phosphorylated alcohol. So because the fatty acids are nonpolar, water is polar, um, this causes the fatty acids to be insoluble in water. Therefore, they orient themselves away from water. And the polar head is found on the hydrophilic uh, alcohol. So this orients itself towards the water. This difference in polarity of the phospholipid creates sort of a bilayer. So this bilayer is very fluid and it has a viscosity similar to oil. Next, let's take a look at the fluid mosaic model. Uh, this idea is because the plasma membrane is composed of lipids and many globular proteins. These proteins are on the, on the phospholipid bilayer because they allow passageways for substances to go through. And the amount of proteins can vary depending on the type of membrane. So the main components of the cell membrane, the lipid bilayer, which we discussed on the previous slide, also the transmembrane proteins, which span the whole distance of the phospholipid bilayer. There's the network of supporting fibers, and um, with these, two, they're similar to the actin in the cytoskeleton of the cell. They kind of keep the structure of the membrane. And then outside of the membrane, there are glycolipids and proteins, and these act as identity markers. Okay, and then this next slide, you can take a look at the fluid mosaic model. So it's very com complex. You'll see the glycolipids on the outside, and then you'll also notice the nonpolar fatty acid chains run through the membrane. So let's take a look at membrane permeability, first starting off with channel proteins and channels. These transmembrane proteins, we said before, they span the whole length of the, the lipid bilayer, and they are included with passive transport across the membrane. And this transport is passive because it doesn't include any energy in the form of ATP. So molecules are easily allowed to pass through the membrane, there's no modification involved. Okay, there's also porins that um, are related to membrane permeability. These are also transmembrane proteins. They have nonpolar regions, and they also are composed of secondary uh, pleated beta sheets. So these beta sheets, they form a motif, and they fold back and forth across each other. They're sort of shaped like a barrel. So in terms of other transmembrane proteins, there are carriers. Carriers may be active or passive. We saw passive types of carrier proteins in previous slides. The active require ATP for the molecule to go from one end of the membrane to the other. There are also channel proteins. This is also pack a passive transport. Um, therefore, there may be modification and there are also receptors which pass information um, from one part of the cell to another. All right, so let's take a look at the actual movement of the substances. Uh, for a passive, one of the types of movement is diffusion. So in this, in this movement, we have molecules or ions going from a region of very high concentration to very low concentration. So take a look at this picture here. You see the ions, they, kind of, they don't want to be close to each other. They want, they want to be um, sparsed across the, uh, the membrane. And the channels may help facilitate this movement of diffusion. Um, as we talked before, the carrier proteins may be specific for certain types of solutes. 
they transport in either direction and in this case they bind the solute physically and this brings the ion or molecule across the membrane. Next type of passive movement is osmosis. This is very similar to diffusion. However, instead of the molecules or ions moving, it's the water that's moving across the membrane. So there's three types of osmotic concentration. There's hyperosmotic, and this is when a solution has a higher concentration. Hypoosmotic, when the solution has a lower concentration and isoosmotic, and this is when there's an equal concentration. So the last type of passive movement we'll take a look at is bulk passage. So this is kind of where the cell envelopes uh, the food, if you will. Uh, there's phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Phagocytosis is where the cell takes it up particulate matter, kind of engulfs it, and it becomes part of the cell. And pinocytosis if you look at it as the cell engulfing a liquid, like the cell's drinking. Um, it's receptor mediated and the molecules have to bind to a specific receptor for this type of movement to occur. And then exocytosis is the exact opposite of endocytosis. It's where the discharge of material from the cell is occurring. Lastly, we'll take a look at the two main types of active transport. So, the famous sodium-potassium pump, which is found in biology, specifically physiology. So, looking at the diagram, if you follow through each step, uh, start with the top picture, you'll see the protein in the membrane is binding to the sodium in the cell. And then next you'll see ATP, phosphorylating protein, with the sodium, okay? And then this phosphorylation is changing uh, the protein conformation, and then this causes the sodium to leave. Uh, fourth, fourth picture, we have potassium outside the cell is binding to the protein sites, and then this in turn causes dephosphorylation to occur. So the phos the phosphate is leaving. And then in turn, this is causing the protein to re revert to the original. And then the cycle continues over and over again until enough energy is made. Lastly, there's coupled transport. It's similar to a sodium potassium pump. But in this case, the main difference is ATP is used uh, indirectly. So it forms a gradient. You have a downward gradient and also an upward gradient, and the ATP energy is used to help facilitate the molecules inside and outside of the cell, as you can see through this picture. All right, that's the end of the lecture. Thank you for visiting myotherprofessor.com, and please refer to our website for more lectures, and also feel free to leave some feedback if you have any suggestions or other information you'd like to see covered. Thank you.